if for some reason you don't like SUVs or crossovers, but you wouldn't refuse all-wheel drive and high ground clearance, we advise you to take a closer look at the Volvo XC70. Volvo has been producing such models since 1997, then, on the basis of the V70 station wagon, an all-wheel drive modification of the V70 XC, cross-country, was built with increased ground clearance and a plastic body kit around the lower perimeter of the body. The car instantly acquired a devoted group of fans and became very popular not only in its homeland, but also in Ukraine, where the weather and road conditions seemed to be created just for him. At the end of 1999, the production of the second-generation Volvo V70 began, and in 2000, sales of the second-generation XC70 began, which had an electronically controlled Haldex multi-plate clutch in the rear-wheel drive. The third-generation Volvo XC70 debuted in 2007 and is still in production. This all-terrain wagon is based on the S80 sedan and is endowed with a truly Jeep ground clearance of 210 mm. In the all-wheel drive transmission, there is a Haldex multi-plate clutch that connects the rear wheels when the front wheels slip. At first, a 3.2-liter gasoline inline 6, 238 horsepower, and a 2.4-liter 5-cylinder inline turbo diesel, 185 horsepower, were installed on the car. The latter was paired with a 6-speed manual or automatic transmission. Gasoline R6 managed exclusively with a 6-band automatic. Built on the basis of the S80 business sedan, the Volvo XC70 off-road station wagon is spacious and luxurious inside, especially the versions with leather interior are good. In front, there is more than enough space, but the three of us cannot sit comfortably on the back sofa. Ergonomics are excellent, soundproofing is a solid 5, and over time, Crickets do not breed in the cabin, pleased with the equipment. The standard version, which includes a turbo diesel and a manual gearbox, had six airbags, a stabilization system, dual zone climate control, heated front seats, drivers, with a servo, and a standard CD radio. Moreover, the first owner, as a rule, ordered additional options when buying a new car. Therefore, in the secondary market you will hardly find a Volvo XC70 with a manual transmission. But there are a lot of copies, charged in full, from natural leather trim and xenon headlights to a panoramic roof and a multimedia system with three screens. Most used XC70s are diesel versions. And for the first time, heavy fuel engines began to be installed on Ukrainian versions of various Volvo models just in 2007. The turbo diesel 5D5244 D5 justified the hopes placed on it. In the Ukrainian operating conditions, it showed itself from the very best side. The motor is quite loyal to domestic diesel fuel, but it's not worth taking it to the extreme, pouring something into the tank, it's not worth it. The fuel system will soon rebel, requiring expensive repairs. Also make it a rule to proactively renew glow plugs after 100,000 km or 5 years of service. This will extend the life of the fuel equipment. The first serious investments will be required by 180,000 to 200,000 km, when the valve mechanism will need to be repaired with the replacement of rockers and hydraulic lifters. The B6324S gasoline engine appeared in 1990. It was installed on a rear-wheel drive Volvo 960 and is considered reliable. At risk are spark plugs and ignition coils, lambda probes and mass airflow sensors. Original spare parts are expensive, and there are not so many high-quality non-original ones. Manual and automatic is a whole hassle-free. After 100,000 km, the Haldex clutch pump fails. The suspension does not suffer from frequent breakdowns, but the parts are not cheap, especially electronically controlled shock absorbers. Most often, you will have to change the stabilizer struts and wheel bearings. On used XC70s, a 2.4-liter turbo diesel is more common than other units. It should regularly check the condition of the drive belt, the breakage of which leads to breakage of the blockhead. Periodically, you will have to update the injection nozzles, and they change one by one, as they fail. After 100,000 km, the turbine may become unusable. In an all-wheel drive transmission, after 100,000 km, problems with an electronically controlled clutch sometimes occur. The pump usually fails. It happens that the clutch control unit fails. If this happens, then troubleshooting can take a lot of time. In the front suspension with McPherson struts, the stabilizer struts wear out by 50,000 km. A little more is released to the shock absorbers and wheel bearings themselves. Ball bearings serve up to 130,000 km. In the rear multi-link suspension, the stabilizer struts will remind of themselves first, on average at 80,000 km. Behind them are shock absorbers. But they can be replaced with ordinary ones, which are several times cheaper. After that, you will have to set the camber and toe angles. 